God, we pause this morning to ask for your blessings on this graduating class. Thank you for the new insights and wisdoms they have gained. Thank you for their knowledgeable instructors, committed SLPOs, and their dedicated A school staff. And thank you for the love and support of their family and friends. Help them now to feel the true measure of their accomplishment and know that it was worth it. May today be a memory that burns bright within them. Strengthen them and bless them now. This is our prayer. Amen. Please be seated. We stand around our chaplain, staff, family and friends, and most importantly, graduates. Welcome to the graduation ceremony for Machinist Make Class 2212 and Electronic Technician Class 2202. Today is a special day for these sailors as it marks the completion of long weeks of hard work. I am pleased we are here to recognize the efforts and achievements of these young men and women. Today's guest speaker was born at Fremont, California, and joined the Navy in 2004. After completing recruit training in Great Lakes, Illinois, he attended Nuclear Field A School and Power School here in Bruce Creek before going to Balsam Spa, New York, to complete his training at the Nuclear Prototype Training Unit, MARC. After graduating in New York, he was assigned to the USS Ronald Reagan, a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, then stationed in San Diego, California. While serving, he completed four combat deployments and qualified propulsion plant watch supervisor. Following his tour on the Reagan, he was chosen as an instructor here at Naval Nuclear Power Training Command, where he taught electronic fundamentals to 13 classes of students before heading back to sea on board USS Carl Vinson, also homeported in San Diego. While on board USS Vinson, he served as the two plant leading chief petty officer and reactor electrical technical assistant and completed two combat deployments. In February 2019, he reported back to NNPTC, where he first instructed and led the Basic Electricity and Electronics Division before moving to be the class director for the Electrician Mate Student Advisors, a position given to staff who exhibit enviable examples and excellence. He continues to demonstrate those traits as he prepares to transfer his, to his next C command. Please join me in a warm round of applause as it is my pleasure to introduce Electrician's Mate Senior Chief, Surface Warfare, Anthony Payton. Good morning, Lieutenant Commander Reinhardt, Chaplain, uh, family and friends, staff, and of course graduates. It is both an honor and a privilege for me to speak to you this morning. We recognize uh, the completion of this important first step in the nuclear pipeline. The day has finally arrived. Uh, countless hours of lecture, after hour study, physical training, duty days, room inspections, personnel inspections, and exams all completed. I'm sure that at some time in your A-School experience, a few of you have felt that you would not make it to this day. Others felt that it might not arrive soon enough. Whichever group you fall in, you have all achieved a major milestone in your naval career. During A-School, you have routinely met or exceeded the standards set before you. You have faced many challenges, both mentally and physically. Your friends and family have supported you. Your staff has guided you. But it was by your persistence and deliberate action that you overcame them. You have developed a work ethic that will enable you to tackle any task. With confidence, I can say that you are prepared to take on the next step in your careers. Our Navy has also faced many challenges. On this day in 1945, the Navy had just completed a two-week bombardment of Okinawa in support of Operation Iceberg, otherwise known as the Battle of Okinawa. Partnered with Allied Forces, it was, it was the largest operation of the Pacific War, totaling 40 aircraft carriers and 18 battleships. The Okinawans called the bombardment the Typhoon of Steel. At dawn on April 1st, Easter Sunday, the morning, uh, more than 450,000 Army and Marine Corps personnel arrived on the beaches unopposed to begin an invasion that lasted 82 days. <coughs> the Allies invaded Okinawa with the intent to use it as a base to invade mainland Japan. Weeks later, after the battle was won, Japan announced its unconditional surrender on August 15th. Although warfare has changed since World War II, uh, you will no doubt be challenged to overcome new obstacles as you continue your career in support of the nation's mission 
as a nuclear operator. Let our history bolster your confidence as you take on these new challenges. Additionally, today, in 1893, the Navy established the rank of the Chief Petty Officer, a rank that would go on to become the title of enlisted leadership in the Navy. Today, despite your brief time in the Navy, you're placed one step closer to that rank on account of your accomplishments. Be proud and celebrate. In just a moment, you'll take part in one of the Navy's oldest traditions, the frocking. I'll read to you the same words that have been read to many before you, charging you with new responsibilities and expectations. While you are still students, you are the, also the leaders and role models of the new firemen and seamen just arriving that will look up to you. Do not take these added responsibilities lightly. You will also serve as a role model to your peers at home as you celebrate with family and take your well-deserved rest. Do not allow yourself to be anything less than the best role model that you can. As a petty officer of the United States Navy, remember that your actions reflect not only yourselves, but also your Navy family. So wear your crow with immense pride, as you have earned it, but always act in a manner that is appropriate for that of your new position. To bring this all together, I'd like to leave you with a quote from Elon Musk that I think captures the work that you have put in to get here today. There are way easier places to work, but nobody ever changed the world on 40 hours a week. Military members, attention. Graduating students, I will now frock you to the rank of third class petty officer. To all who shall see these presents, greetings. Greetings! Know ye by, that by the authority vested in me and reposing special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of these sailors, I do hereby appoint you to the rank of third class petty officer in the United States Navy. As such, from the first day of April, 2022. To the appointee, your appointment as a petty officer in the United States Navy makes you heir to a long and proud tradition of naval leadership. By accepting this appointment, you are charged with demonstrating those standards of performance, moral courage, and dedication to the Navy and the nation, which may serve as an enviable, enviable example to your, Navy, uh, men, your fellow Navy men and women. Your, your desire to excel and to guide others must be boundless. Your appearance must be a model for others, and your performance must be a continual reflection of your sincerity, attention to duty, and moral responsibility. By exhibiting unfailing trust and obedience towards superiors, cooperation and loyalty to your peers, understanding and strength to your subordinates, you will contribute greatly to the effectiveness and good name of the United States Navy. Families, please join me in a round of applause for the Navy's newest third class. among their classmates. The instructors, advisors, and classmates recognize them for their achievements in the classroom. We call these sailors our honor graduates. Today's honor graduates are machinist mate, third class, Zachary Hovenens, and electronic technician, third class, Carlos De La Cruz. Honor graduates, front and center. Uh, thanks. Military personnel, attention to honors. From Commanding Officer, Naval Nuclear Power Training Command, to Machinist Mate, Third Class, Zachary Hovenens, and Electronic Technician, Third Class, Carlos De La Cruz. Congratulations for achieving the highest grade point average among all the graduates from your class at Nuclear Field A School, Charleston. Your standing as number one reflects your personal motivation, academic excellence, and dedication to duty. Your outstanding performance serves as a superb example to your shipmates and is in keeping with the highest traditions of United States Naval Service. Best wishes, signed S.J. McGinnis, Captain, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, Naval Nuclear Power Training Command. Machinist Mate, First Class Submarines, Jeffrey Hewitt. Good morning, Lieutenant Commander Reinhardt, 
chaplain, guests, and more importantly, graduates. First of all, congratulations. Here we are at your nuclear field A school graduation. This is the greatest milestone in your naval career thus far. From here, you will go on to nuclear power school to learn the principles behind shipboard nuclear power plants, then on to prototype to become a certified nuclear operator. This is a prestigious certification that cements your reputation of a quality individual with extreme work ethic, making you a valuable asset to any organization that you may ever be a part of. To quote the art of war, victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. As you continue on in your career in life, do not forget all of the lessons I have tried to teach you along the way. Every lesson I pass down to you was, is, was one more building rock, building block on your road to victory. As you move on to nuclear power school, don't forget every tool you have learned until now. It will make you victorious. Graduates, sailors, shipmates, I use that word in earnest, shipmates. You are the next group of sailors going towards the fleet as nuclear trained operators. You sit here today as graduates, not by mine as staff or anyone else's actions, but by your own. Rest assured, the staff provided guidance, instruction, and mentoring along the way. But these sailors succeeded because they chose to. I would admit I am proud to stand next to each and every one of you, and I cannot wait to see all that you accomplish throughout your naval careers. So I'll leave you with two bits of parting advice. First, I've said this since day one, the standard is perfection, and don't mess this up. <laughs> and now without any further ado, presenting class 2212 Alpha. Look, face! Machinist made third class, Devon Chapman.
third class, Ian Lowry. Machine Smith, third class, Walter Nelson. And Machine Smith, third class, Justin Uniquez. between the sailor who completes the task because they have to and the sailor who gets the job done because they're excited for what's next. So which one is a better sailor? That's a trick question because both are good sailors. Whatever your motivation may be, you each have the potential to be good sailors. So let us define what makes a great sailor then. A great sailor is the one who learns themselves through trials and hard times well enough to understand which of those good sailor motivations they have. I've mentored and watched good sailors throughout my career, and the ones who are humble enough to be honest with themselves and their peers and superiors are the sailors who make a difference. They're the ones who know exactly why they get up every morning on time and ready to work. They're the ones who learn early on that chief is human, who reports to a department head or a master chief who is human, uh, who reports to an executive officer who is mostly human, <laughs> who reports to a CEO who is also human. They recognize that the Navy rarely spends time and money on retaining a monster who's hell-bent on making everyone under them rue the day. The great sailor understands that the boss man works for a boss man who works for a boss man, etc. And getting a particular job done is important to someone. The great sailor knows that just because it's not important to them doesn't mean it's not important at all. The great sailor strives to help their peers understand this as well. For the aspiring leaders in the room, there's my charge to you. Help the followers understand the humanity in the chain of command. To the followers in the room, listen, being a follower is not the antonym of being a great sailor. Okay? I, I recently uh, watched Band of Brothers. Again, you guys watched Band of Brothers before? Man, what a show. Um, and it's a good example of how being a good follower is just as important as being a good leader. That show's full of examples. So if you're a young person in the military and haven't watched it yet, it's, more, it's a more entertaining way to learn lessons in the realm of military rank and file than from some speech. Uh, but I want you to remember, followers, that in a profession dominated by young adults who seek approval from their peers nearly as much as that from their supervisors, be the first follower. There's an example, uh, an excellent video on YouTube that you can look up about this, uh, but the cliff notes are these. We're a tribal species. We seek comfort in the people around us, such as those who came to see you graduate today, and those who sit next to you now. It's easy to band together and chastise the first person to raise a concern with the way something is being done. It's so much harder to be the first person to agree with them in the face of a majority that doesn't like it when someone rocks the boat. Be that first follower. That's the sailor who convinces the others to trust the voice inside their heads that knows the boat rocker is probably right and allows the others to realize that there is a tribe to be safe with on the right side of the problem. The first follower is a great sailor. So as you move on to power school, prototype, and the fleet, long past the half-life of these words in your mind, please try to remember that the great sailor is humble and knows what motivates them to be a good sailor. And sometimes being the first follower is the hardest and yet most valuable challenges that you'll face. 
So off script a little bit right here, I, I gotta tell a quick story. So last night I decided in the 11th hour, you know what, this white t-shirt I'm wearing under my uniform is not quite white enough. So I went to Walmart. Big mistake, do not go to Walmart the night before mass grad. They've been cleaned out of anything white. <laughs> <laughs> so I go over to the Tanger outlet and I swing by Calvin Klein and Gap and all that. And I'm in, I'm in Gap looking for white t-shirts and I see this older gentleman uh, carrying a bag. And in the bag is white skitties. And he's looking at the white t-shirts. And it clicked for me, it made sense. This was a dad who probably just traveled across the country. And also in the 11th hour, his sailor, his son, his daughter said, Dad, I need your help. I need white underwear, I need white t-shirts, I gotta look good in my uniform tomorrow. And that dad, I guarantee you, went there and did it without a question. So the last lesson I want you to understand is the people on the other side of this room, they are your support system. They will do almost anything to make sure that you can do the best you can. Don't forget that. When times get hard, call them, email them. Uh, rely on them to, to help you feel better in your time of need. And also, remember that you are going to give them the inspiration that they need when they're going through a rough time because they've got a son or daughter in the United States name. So remember that, okay? It's really important. I would not have made it 15 years until the rank chief petty officer if I didn't have an excellent support system. But with that said, congratulations, well done, and I will see you guys on the ship. So now presenting, class 2202, Tango. Left, base. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Guy Arlazani. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Brandon Bailey. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Joseph Betts. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Peyton Bauer. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Rafael De Vega. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, John Evers. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Samuel Hoover. Electronics Technician Nuclear, Senior Apprentice, Chanel Karuna Rodney. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Russell Killian. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Stephen LaRosa. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Colin Newton. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Aaron Spaulding. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Jackson Stahl. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Jacob Sumner. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Ashley Throne. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Kayla Bolts. <laughs> following sailors are graduating with distinction. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Tony Bacchus. <laughs> Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Daniel Bates. <laughs> Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Parker Blythe. <laughs> Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Greg Clark. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Logan Connor. <laughs> Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Carlos Delacruz. <laughs> Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Aaron Hedgeland. <laughs> Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Josiah Jones. Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Carson Latchaw. <laughs> Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Sidney Thomas. <laughs> Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Joshua Thompson. <laughs> Electronics Technician Nuclear, third class, Jamie Thorne. Still, there are those that, by the manner in which they have completed their training, 
have inspired others. What sets these sailors aside from their peers are the consistency of their efforts, their refusal to quit, and the example they set. They demonstrated the qualities most treasured in the Navy, those of honor, courage, and commitment. These sailors are recipients of the Commanding Officer's Personal Excellence Award. Today's recipients are, and when I call your name, please stand and remain standing, machinist mate, third class, Jonathan Myers, and electronic technician, third class, John Eccles. by virtue of hard work, personal dedication, and a demonstrated desire to succeed. Your impressive dedications to duty, exceptional academic effort, and perseverance in the face of adversity have made you an outstanding example for your classmates to emulate. The professionalism exhibited while performing your duties is in keeping with our Navy core values and warrants your selection and recognition today as a recipient of the Commanding Officer's Personal Excellence Award. My staff and I are proud of your demonstrated effort leadership, and outstanding results. The character and professionalism that have earned you this recognition will serve you well in your follow-on training, and I am confident you will succeed here and in the fleet. Congratulations and well done. Signed, S.J. McGinnis, Captain, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, Naval Nuclear Power Training Command. today. Uh, it's always great to see such tremendous support from our service members, loved ones, family, friends, uh, especially as we celebrate this monumental milestone of the young Navy career. Uh, someone who sat in similar seats nearly 25 years ago, uh, I know how important it is to your sailors that you're here today to share in this moment. So again, on behalf of the sailors and my staff, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I'm sure you've already heard, it's not going to get any easier from here. That being said, I see you continue to show the same love and support that you've already shown as they continue to enable journeys. Uh, thanks to Chief Jones for stealing all of my thunder. <laughs> Couldn't have said it any better, right? Uh, but I can honestly tell you that receiving letters, emails, and care packages on deployment really makes a difference. Um, especially when motivation and energy runs low, it helps to serve as a reset button to kind of reinvigorate us while we're out there, to keep focused on the mission at hand. Uh, so again, Please continue the same love and support. Graduates, 22 Alpha and 2202 Tango, congratulations on a job well done. Uh, I fully recognize that Chaps and I are the last thing between you and that much deserved time with your friends and family, so I promise to keep this short. Uh, you've already heard me say it, as well as I'm sure your SLPOs and instructors have already said it, it's not going to get any easier. This job always finds new and creative ways to test and challenge you. It can be very humbling at times, but it can also be very rewarding if you let it. <clears throat> to take you on a stroll down memory lane. How many of you remember all the way back to week three when we had that conversation during character development training? A couple of you? All right. I guess that was really impactful and inspirational, right? It's <laughs> awesome. Anyway, had you remembered, uh, we had a conversation about how to be successful, not only here at NFPTC, but as you end your naval career. Uh, we use words like hard work, teamwork, respect, humility, and commitment to define that path to success, right? 
What we didn't talk about, though, is the word luck. How many of you believe in luck? Some head nods, some hand rises. Yeah, a lot of you. Okay, good. Much like the majority of you, I also believed in luck. Believed in luck, right? Except I was the one that thought if it weren't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. That is, until one day, many, many years ago, when I myself was a young petting officer, I was having a conversation with my mentor, Commander Chuck Baker. It started out like any other conversation, but it quickly turned into a teaching moment. And he was always really good at doing that, I promise. Uh, but I'll never forget this particular conversation because it changed my way of thinking and my approach to life in general forever. He looked at me and asked me, do you know what the definition of luck is? He has already heard my thoughts on luck. So I kind of stood up at the bubble look, having no idea, right? Uh, and he leaned in and got real serious and said, it's when preparation meets opportunity. Think about that for a minute. When preparation meets opportunity. Are some people truly luckier than others or just more prepared to seize their opportunity? I pose this question to you because in our line of work, we must always be prepared for the unexpected. We must always seek continual improvement, both individually and as a team. So when that event occurs, whatever it is that tests our preparedness without any prior warning, we are ready to seize that opportunity and take decisive action, potentially saving a life and quite possibly the ship. Maybe it's not even that dramatic. Maybe it's just passing that advancement exam or accomplishing a small task that makes us just a little bit better personally or professionally. So I challenge you to always strive to be better today than you were yesterday. I will leave you with my final thoughts. First, there is no substitute for hard work. I'm a firm believer in this. I like to call this effort and attitude, but it is a mindset. Secondly, be humble. Pay it forward. Take care of each other. That's the teamwork part. And third, Stay committed to each other and the mission. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. The key is learning from those mistakes. In this line of work, there'll be times that we operate at or near limits. We will take risks, calculated risks, or risks nonetheless. If you take this advice on board and apply it to everything you've learned here, day in and day out, you will be successful. Whether you're a six year or 36 year saver, it always applies. So remember, be humble, be hungry, Always strive to better today than you were yesterday. Once again, thank you very much for being here. Graduates, congratulations on a job well done. you have given us to honor and celebrate these graduates. We pray that they will go to their next phase with a sense of pride and confidence, ready to face what lies before them. Bless them now, God, always providing them guidance, safety, and protection. May they strive toward excellence in all that they do. May they go now with the knowledge that they have your fullest and most profound blessings. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. This concludes today's graduation ceremony. Graduates, Congratulations and well done. Military personnel, carry on. <laughs>